go, Gemma's perfect start to the day. And don't overcook it. I want it crispy, not hard. Gemma, I know how to cook bacon. It's not that I'm fussy or anything. It's just that I really do love bacon. In fact, I love all meat. Life without meat isn't worth thinking about. And that, Kate, is how you make a perfect bacon sandwich. Thanks, Kate. I really appreciate you cooking my bacon for me. You should eat more fruit, you know. It's much healthier. And you'd know, would you? That's just fat and grease. You'll end up with spots all over your face. At least I'd still look better than you. See what I have to put up with around here. There's not an intelligent brain in the house. Except for me, of course. Wally! Come on, Wally, wake up! Breakfast time! Wally! Does he ever do anything? Pretty slow life being a wombat, mate. If it's real action you're after, you're standing on it. Where? Ants. One ant can lift 20 times its own weight, no worries. Is that true? That's right. Insects. They're all over the place. Been round since long before us, be here long after we're gone. That's where the real life is, mate. Whoa. This demands serious investigation. All right, everyone, all aboard. In the back, please, darling. Oh, but I don't... Chris is driving me to the hairdresser. I am? You can drop the children off afterwards. Chop, chop. I told you we should have caught the bus. Mrs Krantz is going to demolish me if I'm late again. Just tell her you've had an emergency. Since when is the hairdresser's an emergency? Come on, Chris. We don't want the children to be late for school. And so, I'd like you all to give a very special welcome to... Don't tell me. You've had an emergency. How'd you know? Because, Mark, you've used the same excuse for the last five years. And please, take your seats. As I was saying, I'd like you all to give a very special welcome to Forrester Redwood. from Perth in Western Australia. Thank you, everyone. Nice to see you all. Forrester will be our guest for the next two weeks, so I'm counting on you to show him lots of our usual Deep Creek hospitality, eh? Yes, sir. Over to you, Mrs Krantz. Enjoy your stay, Forrester. I'm sure I will, sir. Thank you. And may I say, Mrs Krantz, it's a pleasure to be here. So nice, so polite, so different from all the yobbos around here. This guy's out to get something. You can count on it. Well, firstly, we have to find somewhere for Forrester to sit. Lisa said she wanted to move so Forrester can sit here, Mrs Krantz. When did I say that? Oh, excellent. Well, Forrester, you take the desk next to Gemma's and Lisa, you move over there. All right, so I was a bit cool to Lisa. But we're talking about me finding someone intelligent to talk to. That's much more important than Lisa. Hey, Forrester, you play basketball? A bit. Do you want to shoot some hoops? Sure. Let's see what this guy's really made of. You go first. You'll have to get through us, though. I knew Forrester would be good at sports. He just oozes class in everything he does. Don't you think Forrester just oozes class in everything he does? Honestly, Lisa, you do talk such rubbish sometimes. Gemma, do you want to know something completely amazing? Not really, no. Insects? make up three quarters of animal life. There are between 5 and 30 million different species. Isn't that mind-boggling? Oh, Greg, can't you just go find some traffic to play in? Traffic? Where? Not just anywhere. Just wait. <laughs> <laughs> what 
Where'd you learn to play like that? <laughs> it was nothing. I've been a bit out of form lately since I sprained my wrist. You can play like that with a sprained wrist? I don't believe this. This is a complete humiliation. I'm not from here either, you know. Pardon? I'm English. I'm from England. Oh. Good for you. Hey, looks like we've got something in common. I had a video camera too. It's digital, actually. I'm making a movie. How very artistic. It's a documentary. This is too good to be true. Not only can he humiliate Mark at sports, but he's also very intelligent and creative, like me. I love documentaries. Really? I don't watch anything else. What's it about? Me. I'm sorry? It's about me. I'm documenting my existence. I'm like both a director and an actor. That is so cool. Finally, a chance to do something really interesting. Do you need any help? Sure. Why not? What do you think? About what? Do I look cool? You are asking me if you look cool? Well, do I? But you always say... Just a simple yes or no will do. Well... Anyway, real leather is always super cool. Oh, I must go. Bye! I never miss that shot. I don't know what it is, but ever since that Forrester guy came, my game's been totally off. Hey, Mark. Thanks. Nice outfit. OK, this time, forget Forrester. Straight in. Hey, miss. I don't believe this. Told you so. OK, reality check. First thing you do to solve a problem is admit that you've got a problem. I've got a problem. Its name is Forrester. <laughs> Hi. Nice jacket. Thanks. I knew he'd have good taste. Is it real acrylic? Are you kidding? This is leather. I don't believe it. It is. It's Italian. Do you want to see the label? Gemma, once upon a time, that was a living, breathing, wild animal running free through the forest. What? My jacket? Now you wear its skin on your back. Oh, did you think I meant real leather? I meant real imitation leather. It's not real, real leather. Are you sure? Totally. At least that's what they told me in the shop, anyway. Can't trust anyone these days. Back in the bad old days, I was just like everyone else. Shoes, belts, watch straps, you name it. I loved leather. But one afternoon, I saw a documentary on TV about how every living thing has rights, and we need to respect those rights. Cut. How was I? Brilliant. Perfect. Not too perfect? No, no, just normally perfect. That's perfect. Well, I know mosquitoes are insects, and insects are among your friends, but there is a limit. When did you start to feel this way? About animals, I mean. Hard to remember exactly. I think it was last Tuesday. Oh, not long then. Yeah, but once I make up my mind, I'm 100% all the way. Right. Me too. <laughs> Meat, fish, eggs. We shouldn't eat living things. And it's so unhealthy. I so agree. All that fat and grease, it makes your skin go spotty. And milk. Don't even get me started on milk. What's wrong with milk? Are you kidding? Milk is stolen from cows. Did you ever think that? I'm definitely not drinking any more milk. Not that I do now, but if I ever did, I wouldn't. Ever. Hey, Forrester. What are you doing here? Just want to know if you'd like a rematch. Go away, Mark. Ten shots each. Whoever dunks the most wins. Go away! You're not a chicken, are you? Do you always have to act like such an idiot? Ignore him, Forrester. Like I told you, mate. I've got an injury. You can't keep using that excuse, you know, mate. Mark! Fine. Next week at school, then. I can wait. 
I'm so sorry, Forrester. No worries. Here, have some of this. Thanks. What is it? Tofu. Great, isn't it? It doesn't have much flavour. Look, if flavour was important, we'd only eat chocolate, right? That's so right. Chocolate equals flavour equals bad. Tofu equals no flavour equals good. That's amazing. It's so good to talk to someone with a real brain. Forrester is definitely my kind of person. Hello, mister. Boy, are you an insect. Oh, I thought you were cooking dinner tonight, Kate. Gemma's doing it. But Gemma hates cooking. She insisted. Is dinner ready? Gregory King, go and clean yourself up this instant. Hey, Mum, you want to see what I found today? It's super excellent. I said this instant. Oh, all right. Ah, and what scrum diddly umptious delights do you have in store for us this evening then, Gemma? Spag bowl, sausage and chips. What are they? Rice cakes. This isn't dinner. This is dinner. Where's all the meat? I shall no longer be a part of the slaughter of innocent creatures simply to satisfy our hunger for food. Have you been watching daytime television again? We must learn to live without always killing things. I can't eat this stuff. Come on, you two. Let's go get some proper food. You've had some baked beans and fried eggs. I think there's some sardines. Mummy? Where's it all gone? What's happened to all the food, Gemma? I threw it all out. You did what? I will not let this family poison itself anymore. Come on, Dudley. Time for dinner, Dudley. Can you stop talking about food? But Dudley's got to have his dinner. How about you, boy? Hey, Mark, you want to see my new pet? All I want is a big, juicy piece of steak with barbecue sauce and a double serving of chips with some egg. I've got lots of scrumptious food for you, Dudley. <laughs> They were completely and utterly gobsmacked. When they saw that the cupboard was bare and I'd trashed all the poisonous food, they were like, whoa. That is so brave, Gemma. I told them, I said, from now on, this is what you eat. Way to go. Now all I have to do is work on Vinny. Who? Vinny, he looks after the animals where I live. What sort of animals? Koalas, wombats, cockatoos, all sorts. What kind of place is this? It's a wildlife park. A wildlife park. Is that a problem? Wildlife Park is just another name for animal jail. You're living on a prison farm. This is terrible. Those poor, scared koalas hugging their trees in fear. They should be free to roam wherever they please. Actually, koalas do live in trees. Only because we make them. We have to do something about this. Like what? A protest. A big protest. Something the authorities can't ignore. A protest? Back in WA, a bunch of people chained themselves to these trees to stop them from being cut down. It was all over TV. This is a brilliant idea. Me on TV. Gemma King, champion of the animals. <laughs> hey Dudley, wait till you see what I got for you. I bought this at the pet shop. The man said it was really for mice, but I knew it would be just perfect for you. And I've even found you some friends to keep you company. Hey, do you think you could ask him? Ask who about what? Forrester, of course, about the basketball rematch. A, I'm not going to ask him. B, even if I did, Forrester wouldn't be interested. And C, you're a serial loser, so get lost or I'll phone the police. Does that mean you'll ask him then? And no, no. I think that means you won't do it. I've worked it all out. You have? What? A protest. All oh, right. Tomorrow's Saturday. We'll do it then when the park has lots of visitors. Excellent. We'll have to keep it a secret, though. Can't risk anybody leaking our plans. No way. If we do this right, then soon all the children will start joining in and it'll be a worldwide movement. Brilliant. So what's the plan? We're going to chain ourselves to the front gate of Wallaby Park. <laughs> Hurry up, they'll be opening soon. Are you sure you want to go through with this? Of course I'm sure. Okay. 
Where's the lock? What lock? We've got to lock the chains to the gate. It shows the world we really care about this. Oh, right. Um... I know, why don't we use the lock to your bike? I don't know, it, it's my cousin's bike. And those locks, they cost over $20. What's $20 when you're changing the world? OK, OK. This will be the greatest moment of my life. A real statement about who I am and what I stand for. I hope my hair looks all right. There, perfect. Now get your chains on. We can't both be chained up. Why not? One of us has to film everything, so we've got proof of what we've done. But we'll be on the TV news. They only show a small segment. We want a record of the whole thing, right? Are you sure? Totally. Oh, and here. I brought something for you. Free the animals. Right on, this will really show them. It's so nice to have a Saturday morning where we don't have to open the park. Well, I think it's terrible. Why does the council have to repair the road on our busiest day? The councils are like that. Well, I wish they weren't. Where's Gemma this morning? Still in bed snoring what? a bit. No, she's not. Perhaps she's teaching the dingoes to eat tofu. <laughs> That'd be right. <laughs> oh, what time is it now? 10.15. Well, where is everybody? Chris should have opened up the park ages ago. Oh, quick, someone's coming. Free the animals, free the animals. Every creature has the right to liberty. Good morning, lovely day. Not for the poor animals who aren't free to enjoy it. I wonder if you could point out the way to Deep Creek. Oh, yes, it's right down that road there. Oh, thank you very much. So much for their social conscience. This is Forrester. Is it the TV station? My dad. Oh. That's great. They want to see me now. OK, I'll be right home. Bye. What are you doing? Sorry, Gemma. But you can't just leave. This is really important. Forrester! Wait, come back! Oh, you've got the key! Oh. Come on, Dudley, it's time we met the rest of the family. Greg, have you seen Gemma? No. I can't find her anywhere. Hey, Mum, you want to see my new pet? Later, darling. I'm trying to find your sister. Don't worry, Dudley. I'll organise a welcome party where you can meet the whole of the family at once. There you are. We've been looking everywhere for you. Well, now you found me, happy. Free the animals? Is that some sort of protest? Yes. Well, you picked a good day for it. The roads are closed for maintenance. Right. So, unless you want to hang around on these chains all day, you might as well come back to the house. Well, I would if I could, but that trace of forest has gone off with the key. I could fix that. But you've got to do a favour in return. What? To get Forrester to give me a rematch. <sighs> Done. You know what would happen if we let all the animals go, don't you? They'd all run around free in the wild where they belong. They'd all starve because they don't know how to look after themselves in the bush. Oh. Didn't Forrester tell you that? Why should he? No reason. Just thought he knew everything about everything. What's this all about? It's something very important to Gregory and I'm sure it'll only take a moment. Ready, darling? Everyone, I want you to meet the newest member of the family, my pet spider, Dudley. Oh, spider, yeah! Vinny, isn't that a... On a web spider. It sure is. <laughs> it's just stay calm. Now, Greg, I want you to turn around, put the spider on the table and step back. What are you doing? Greg, Dudley's a funnel web spider. So? One bite and he could kill you. Oh my goodness, and you've had him with you all this time? But does that mean that. Afraid so, mate. Good heavens. Thank you very much for your help last Saturday, Forrester. Hey, yeah, really sorry about that, but I just had to get to that audition. Audition? 
My first major TV role. And guess what? I've got the part. You don't say. It's only a commercial, but hey, you got to start somewhere, right? Congratulations. You wouldn't mind doing me a favour then? What kind of favour? Accepting Mark's challenge with a rematch. Not a problem. Recess tomorrow then. Suits me. Hang on a minute. That's a leather jacket. You like it? And that's a milkshake. It's a chocolate commercial. My agent says I have to bulk up for it. But what about the animals? The prisons? Healthy food? That was last week, Gemma. You gotta move with the times, you're gonna get left behind. Excuse me, I've gotta comb my hair. Cheer up, Greg. Stick insects are really cool pets. Come on, Steve. Here's a nice juicy leaf. Nothing, not even a nibble. He might have been deadly, but there'll never be another Dudley. One more shot. If he gets this in, he wins. Honestly, Lisa, why do you always have to act like such a wet blanket? Illegal. Too good, mate. You beat me fair and square. Winners are grinners, eh, Mark? Yeah. OK, so I missed Dutch Forrester and he ended up to be even more hideous than Deadly Dudley. But hey, at least I've learnt something from this. I've learnt... Well, I must have learnt something. I've learnt that I really do love bacon sandwiches and no one's ever going to stop me from eating them again. Now that's what I call a real lesson in life. <laughs>